SpaceX has completed a new static fire test on the latest iteration of the Super Heavy rocket, which is expected to join the company's fleet of active duty spacecraft. The Super Heavy is a crucial part of SpaceX's current cargo supply missions for the U.S. government and is also expected to play a major part in the colonization of Mars. Let's take a closer look at this latest test and what it means for the Super Heavy. Super Heavy is the biggest, most important piece of Elon Musk's grand plan for SpaceX. Musk has repeatedly stressed that he founded SpaceX back in 2002 primarily to help humanity colonize Mars. SpaceX is now actively trying to turn this sci-fi dream into reality. The company is developing a 100-passenger spaceship called Starship and a giant rocket known as Super Heavy, which together constitute the transportation system that Musk thinks will bring Mars settlements within reach at long last. The Super Heavy is powered by a cluster of Raptor engines, which are some of the most powerful engines ever built. The engines use a combination of liquid methane and liquid oxygen as the propellant, which provides a high performance and reliable source of propulsion. The use of liquid methane also makes the engines environmentally friendly, reducing the carbon footprint of space travel. With the development of the Super Heavy, SpaceX has opened up a new world of possibilities for space travel. The Starship has the potential to make deep space missions more accessible and affordable, paving the way for the colonization of other planets. The future of space travel is bright, and the Starship is at the forefront of this new era. With its powerful engines, efficient fuel system, and revolutionary landing system, the Super Heavy is set to revolutionize the way we explore the final frontier. Whether it's a mission to the moon, Mars, or beyond, the Super Heavy is ready to take us there. As the Starship and Super Heavy edge ever closer to the orbital test, SpaceX has just conducted its most ambitious and powerful test to date with its Starship Mars rocket. The company ignited 33 Raptor engines on Booster 7, a prototype of Starship's first stage Super Heavy rocket, during a static fire test at Starbase, the company's South Texas facility. Static fires are common pre-flight trials in which a rocket's engines are briefly ignited while the vehicle stays anchored to the ground. And SpaceX is gearing up for a flight with Starship, the program's first orbital test mission, which apparently will involve Booster 7 and an upper stage prototype known as Ship 24. That landmark flight could launch before the end of the year. This static fire could be a big step toward the orbital liftoff. It doubled the previous highest number of Raptor engines that SpaceX had ignited during a Starship engine test. But there's still considerable work to do to demonstrate Booster 7's flight readiness. The vehicle boasts a whopping 33 Raptors. SpaceX is developing Starship to take people and cargo to the moon and Mars, as well as perform a variety of other space flight tasks. Starship prototypes have flown a handful of test flights to date, but none of them have gotten higher than about six miles in the sky, and none of them have involved a super heavy vehicle. SpaceX has already inked a number of customers for Starship, including some private customers that have also signed up to ride Starship on missions around the moon. Billionaire Yusaku Meizawa booked an entire flight, for example, and space tourism pioneer Dennis Tito and his wife Akiko bought two seats on a different mission. Over the last few months, SpaceX has made incredible upgrades to the Starship as it inches closer to an orbital test flight. Perhaps the most important update was to the Raptor engines. The company makes regular upgrades to the engine to improve its efficiency and reusability. In recent months, SpaceX has used two variants of the engine, with the newer one dubbed Raptor 2. The company states Raptor 2 includes a large number of performance and reliability improvements over the previous iteration. The Raptor engine is a full-flow stage combustion cycle engine that runs on superchilled liquid oxygen and superchilled liquid methane, both of which will power SpaceX's next-generation vehicle, Starship. The Raptor engine benefits from the highly advantageous FFSCC cycle, maximizing the impulse generated by a given amount of propellant. It is the third FFSCC engine to ever be developed and the first to leave the test stand. The first stage of Starship, called Super Heavy, will be jam-packed with 33 Raptor engines, 20 non-gimbling Raptor engines in the outermost ring, 10 gimbling engines in the middle ring, and 3 gimbling central engines in the innermost ring. This number is expected to decrease in the future as SpaceX further upgrades Raptor. 
The Starship currently hosts six total engines, three vacuum-optimized non-gimbling engines, and three sea-level gimbling engines. As research and development continue on the Starship, the latest news from SpaceX is that a new prototype for the vehicle has successfully undergone a static fire test of its engines ahead of its first planned orbital test flight. SpaceX fired seven engines on its Starship Super Heavy Prototype Booster 7 on September 19th, marking the highest number of the company's new Raptor engines ever tested at the same time. To prepare for Starship's maiden orbital flight, SpaceX has been conducting static fire tests with increasing intensity in which one or more engines are ignited while the vehicle remains stationary on the ground. A static fire test is a rough equivalent of revving a car engine in neutral, with this particular one lasting around 10 seconds. The Starship combined with the Super Heavy has the ability to carry up to 100 passengers to the Moon, Mars, and beyond, giving people the opportunity to experience space travel in a whole new way. With its comfortable cabin and advanced life support systems, the Starship is the perfect vehicle for space tourism, and with its powerful engines and efficient fuel system, it can carry out long-duration missions with minimal interruption. Space tourism is a relatively new concept and has only become possible in recent years due to advancements in technology. In the past, only astronauts and professional space travelers had the opportunity to experience the thrill of space travel. But now, with companies like SpaceX offering private missions to space, the dream of space travel is becoming a reality for more and more people. Space tourism offers many benefits both for the individual traveler and for society as a whole. For the individual, it offers the chance to experience a once-in-a-lifetime adventure and the opportunity to see our planet from a completely new perspective. For society, it provides a new source of revenue and jobs and helps to advance the field of space exploration. While space tourism is expected to be a big part of the Starship's future, the craft is needed for several groundbreaking scientific missions. After a successful splashdown of the Orion spacecraft in the Pacific Ocean, NASA Administrator and former Senator Bill Nelson shared that his agency plans to go to Mars by the end of 2030. Senator Nelson struck an upbeat tone after NASA had a great Artemis One mission, and the remarks were made during a post-splashdown press conference in which he also shared details for SpaceX's Starship Lunar Lander. The event was attended by several agency officials, including Michael Serafin, NASA's Artemis One mission manager, who shared his final thoughts on Orion's performance as it entered the Earth at breakneck speeds for a successful landing. Throughout its journey to the moon and back, Orion performed better than NASA engineers had initially expected. The spacecraft's power generation, done through solar panels, generated more power than expected. As part of the mission, NASA added additional test objectives to stress the vehicle and learn more about its performance for future missions. The next Artemis mission will involve a crew, and not only will NASA use the data for the next mission, but it will also make changes to the ship. Administrator Nelson also shared crucial details about SpaceX's Starship Lunar Lander. This is currently the only vehicle that has been chosen by NASA to land humans on the moon as part of the Artemis program. He announced that SpaceX plans to do an uncrewed landing in 2023 and then to do the crewed landing in late 2024. While delays are possible due to the Starship being a brand new concept, all signs point towards the craft being ready in time. Starship is the centerpiece of Musk's eventual plans to head to Mars. Although SpaceX makes its money from launch services, the company is also focused on developing technology for future space exploration. In 2011, Elon Musk told delegates at the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics in San Diego that he planned to take people to Mars in 10 to 15 years. Three years later, at the International Space Development Conference, he said the reusable rocket stage would be a step in getting to the Red Planet. In 2016, Musk unveiled his technological plan for Martian transport, which is a part of his plan to create a self-sustainable Red Planet Colony in the next 50 to 100 years. But before it can do any of those things, the Starship must first seek clearance to be spaceworthy from the FAA. Various prototypes of the vehicle have conducted static fire tests over the years, yielding a ton of data that has made improvements to the craft's design. In one instance, SpaceX fired up the engines of its latest Starship prototype in a dramatic test that also set some of the surrounding landscape ablaze. All six of the Raptor engines on the vehicle blazed briefly at Starbase, the company's South Texas facility. The static fire test marked another step toward launch for the Starship, which is slated to conduct the program's first-ever orbital test flight in the coming months. The static fire lasted just a few seconds, but flames burned at Starbase for a while afterward. The test sparked a grass fire that brought the local fire department out as a safety precaution. 
Regulation remains the big uncertainty as Starship awaits its chance to make an orbital flight test. And if all goes according to plan, the spaceship will make a round-the-world trip to splash down off the coast of Hawaii after 90 minutes, while the first stage of the Super Heavy rocket should return to Earth six minutes after launch in the Gulf of Mexico. However, the FAA has undertaken an environmental assessment of the Starship's mission, which delayed SpaceX's plans to attempt the flight. Even after the assessment is finished, there could be more certifications to consider. SpaceX's desire to fly an orbital mission with Starship prompted a lengthy environmental review by the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, and there are still several things to finish up. That FAA review, called a Programmatic Environmental Assessment, examined Starship activities at Starbase. The FAA concluded the assessment in June, following numerous delays from late 2021, due to the need to consult with other agencies and deal with public comments. The FAA said that SpaceX needs to take 75 actions to reduce its environmental impact of the area. Despite SpaceX founder Elon Musk saying several times that Starship would be ready to go orbital soon, Musk recently said the target was November, it seems that SpaceX hasn't quite finished with those FAA action items, which could land the company in hot water with the authorities. If you like this video, you may also enjoy this one, which talks about the Starship's newest launch update. Do you think Super Heavy is powerful enough to help SpaceX colonize the solar system? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below.